So um, in ICF, what we do during the summer holidays, because this is the summer holidays, I know it's a bit rainy, but it's the summer holidays, and some, te some parents are a bit sad because they've got to think, oh no, what am I going to do for the next six weeks? And some grandparents are like, oh no, <laughs> not Avril though. No. So, but during the summer, what we do is things slightly differently, so you can all pretend that you're at Sunday school today. Yay, suddenly the smiling faces have gone. <laughs> but during the summer holidays, we do something slightly differently and the preach this, this morning won't be quite so heavy or deep, but it'll be a bit lighter, we'll be a little bit more interactive and we'll have a video as well to watch halfway through. But we have something for the children to do and Erin, my glamorous assistant, as assistant, as assistant <laughs> is going to hand out something to the children. And while I'm up here speaking, girls, um, you've got a wee activity to do and there's two in there. There's one for you to do for yourself and there's one for you to choose somebody to give it to at the end. Ooh. Okay, and if you want any extra packs, just let us know, okay? Fabulous. We'll see at the end what they've been up to. So last week, so what we've been doing is we're looking at Old Testament superheroes. A little bit like the Superheroes Club that we do here on a Tuesday. We had 22 children, by the way, on Tuesday. It was great. So we'll be looking at Old Testament superheroes and... Um, Time only permits us to, as I said, have a quick overview of these characters. But the hope is when you go home, you might study them a little bit deeper for yourselves. So last week, our superhero character was Nehemiah. And Nehemiah's superpower was prayer. He had an effective prayer life. He was also a leader who was brave, influential, tactical, and focused. And I thought as a reminder of all these superhero characters that we were looking at over the summer, wouldn't it be a great idea if I designed a bookmark and each week give you a wee bookmark as a wee reminder of what we've been looking at. And lastminute.com didn't help me because they were late and I had no bookmarks last week to give anybody but I have them this week. So that means Trinity folk, they were in a pocket, Trinity folk get the benefit of having a bookmark. So last week's bookmark is here and Lorna will be at the end at the door giving out some bookmarks. Please take some for yourselves and your friends because there's loads. Some, for some reason it's cheaper to buy more than you need. So the verse on it is, O oh Lord, hear, O oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those who delight in honouring you, please grant me success today by making the king favourable to me, put into his heart to be kind to me. So that's the bookmark for today, for, from last week. So, and that's taken, of course, from Nehemiah chapter one, part of his prayer. But this week, no prizes for guessing what superhero we're looking at today. We heard it read, didn't we, from Marina? We're looking at Ruth today. And that we can read all about Ruth in the Bible, in the book called Ruth. Ruth. Well done. You're listening. It's fabulous. So let's take a few moments now to watch a video clip about Ruth. Just a kind of overview of the story of Ruth. Now watch closely because I'll have some questions afterwards. Thank you, boys. God's story, Ruth. So part of God's story is about a woman named Ruth, and it begins like this. Ruth lived in a place called Moab and was married to a guy who was part of God's special family, the Israelites. A few years later, though, Ruth's husband died. 
Instead of returning to her family, which would have been expected, she stayed with Naomi, her husband's mom. Naomi tried to get Ruth to go back to her family in Moab, but Ruth wouldn't leave Naomi, no matter what. In fact, she wanted to go back to Israel with her. Ruth said, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So they both returned to Naomi's home in Bethlehem. Back then though, it was hard for women to find work. Usually, they had to be taken care of by their husband or a dad. It's really hard to imagine that now, but Naomi and Ruth might not have even known how they'd survive. At first, to get food, Ruth went to the fields of a man named Boaz and followed his harvesters around. If they dropped anything, even just a piece of grain, she picked it up. This was called gleaning. Ruth worked from morning to night and barely even took a break. Boaz noticed. He told his workers to leave behind some extra grain for her to gather. When Naomi heard about this, she was overjoyed because Boaz was Naomi's relative and what's called a family redeemer. That meant that it was his responsibility to take care of his family. If anybody was going to rescue Ruth and Naomi, it was Boaz. Kids, we have a redeemer too. It's Jesus. He's the one who saves us. Anyway, this gave Naomi an idea. She told Ruth to put on her best clothes and perfume and then go to the place where Boaz was sleeping. Naomi said that once Boaz had gone to sleep, Ruth should lay down by his feet. Now, this may sound like a weird plan, but it was actually really brave. Ruth trusted Naomi and obeyed. When Boaz woke up, he was surprised. After all, someone was lying at his feet. That's not exactly a normal night. When Boaz asked who Ruth was, she said, I am your servant. You are my family redeemer. Now Boaz understood. Ruth wanted Boaz to marry her so that she and Naomi would both be taken care of. Boaz agreed. This was a huge deal. Ruth wasn't an Israelite, but she wanted to follow God anyway. By marrying Boaz, she got to officially be part of God's family. In fact, Ruth's great-grandson was King David, and many, many years later, Jesus, the rescuer, was born into the same family line. Now, because of Jesus, we get to be a part of God's family too. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Ruth was from Moab. Her husband died. Ruth was left with his mom, Naomi. Naomi told her to go home. Ruth said no. She went to Israel with Naomi. They needed someone to take care of them. Ruth gleaned in a field. Boaz noticed. He left extra grain for Ruth. Naomi made a plan. Ruth obeyed it. She wanted to marry Boaz. He agreed. Ruth became part of God's special family. And we can too. And that's a part of God's story. There we go. That's a wee insight to what we do at Superheroes. We have a wee video. And then we have sometimes, we have some questions to see if they were watching carefully. Were you watching carefully? Because I have a glamorous assistant here <laughs> who has a microphone so we can all hear. So, question number one. Where was Ruth originally from? Where was she from? No shouting out now. Hands up in the air. Come on. This will be a long, long, long service if you're going to be shy. Pardon? Moab. Yes, correct. And what was her mother-in-law called? <laughs> Naomi. Naomi. <laughs> and where did Israel, where did, where did Naomi want to go back to? <laughs> Where, where did she want to go back to? Come on, I have, I'm going to give you the answer. Israel. That's right. And what was the name of the job that Ruth did when they arrived in Israel? Someone at the back. Oh. Is there any Trinity folk listening? Gleaning. There we go. Well done. Thank you. What was the name of the man who was in the field whose field she was working in. Oh, a child, brilliant. 
Boaz. Well done. Now, what was Boaz's position in the family? That was kind of, I gave you a clue with the last word I just said. Oh. Family redeemer. There we go. Who is our redeemer? So we should all shout that one out. Yeah, we should all know this one. Jesus. Yay. Now, who was Ruth's great grandson? Don't ask the family historian. Yay. King David. Yay, well done. Give yourself a gold star. Rob, you can sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So let's take a few moments now to look at some of Ruth's story and how that we can relate to the story and take some lessons from it for ourselves. Now, Ruth was an ordinary woman. Anybody ordinary here? I am, I think. She faced ordinary challenges. She faced death, moving to a foreign land. That's not really ordinary, but she faced moving to a foreign land. Lack of finances, family responsibilities and challenges. Some of these things we faced, we might have faced all of them. We might have faced many more. What made Ruth stand out was when she faced these ordinary challenges, her life was shaped by faith. She was guided by God. Remember her, her plea to Naomi, your God will be my God. And that's a reminder for us too, that God is involved in our day-to-day -day hardships of life. We sang in that first hymn this morning, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Sometimes we forget this. But let's not be blind to God's sovereign work in our lives. If we've gone off track, we can always get back on track because he is only a prayer away. Proverbs 3, 5 and, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Ruth was a superhero. Ruth was loyal. She was brave. She was patient, humble, hardworking, faithful. She was virtuous, meaning she, her behavior showed high moral standards. She had excellent morals. She was full of love. What amazing characteristics to have. I could learn an awful lot from having a little bit more of those in my life. I don't know about you. Ruth was also the great grandmother of Jesus. Now, our resident family historian has helped me get this bit right. Thanks, Mum. But Ruth is great times 28 grandmother of Jesus through Joseph's line. And she is great times 43 grandmother of Jesus through Mary's line. I think that's kind of cool. Anyone else? I think that's quite cool. Thanks, Mum. But Jesus, I've said Mary is a superhero, but Jesus, he is my superhero. He is the most incredible superhero in the Bible. In fact, he's the most incredible superhero ever. He conquered death by rising again so that we may have life. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I, that's Jesus speaking, I have come that they, that's you and me, may have life and have it to the full. Yeah. Isn't that good? 
Ruth chapter 1, 16 and 18 really stood out for me as I was reading through Ruth. Ruth's just a wee short book. It's only four chapters. It's, I'd encourage you to read it. It's a great story. But in verse um, 16 and 18 of chapter 1, it says this. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me so severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. What commitment Ruth had. And it makes me ask that of myself. How is my commitment to God and to his family, the church at large, the family of God, which we are all part of? Whatever place or fellowship that we worship, wherever we worship God, can we say that your people will be my people. Robbie and I very quickly felt a great family connection here at Trinity when we started coming along along before our services at ICF on a Sunday morning. And we pray regularly for the Trinity family. And we know that it's very, very hard for you as you prepare for the union. And we do trust God's timing in all of this. We know it's difficult, but we pray that you very quickly will be able to say where you settle that your people will be my people because your God is my God. And for ICF folk, when new people come and join us, may we welcome new people into our fellowship. And if not immediately, we pray that their God, that our God would be their God. So the bookmarks that I have, I always go to the wrong pocket, don't I? The bookmark is that one. The bookmarks that we have today. The verse on it says, don't make me leave you, for I want to go where you go and live where you live, your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Because the story of Ruth reminds us that God is at work in the day to day in the average activities of average people. The characters of this story face normal challenges. It's not just a love story, but it's a story of a prodigal family coming to repentance and God bringing them from destruction to the center of spiritual importance. Will we allow God to be at work in our day-to-day ordinary? Will we recognize him working in our day-to-day? And will we learn from Ruth's example? Amen.